Hey now, today I'm going to play around with a type of charcuterie I haven't made before. I don't think it's got a name. This is based on a conversation I had with my buddy Dave, so I'm going to throw him a little bit of credit here, otherwise he might leave a nasty comment for the video. Um, I'm starting off here with some pork loin. Got this on sale, so good opportunity to do something in the curing chamber. And what I'm going for is something that's garlicky. I'm going to be using black garlic for that. Lots of pepper, a little, little hint of cumin, so let's get started. So the first ingredient that's going to go into this cure is cumin seed, and this it's not a lot, it's 0.175%, so it's only 3 grams for this. But of course, the only kind of cumin seed that a person should use is toasted, so I'm going to give this just a little light toast in this non-stick non pan. Okay, so after a few minutes of just shooting this around here in this pan, it's browned up nicely and it's really nice and fragrant, so I'm just going to let it cool down for a minute. Okay, so I've got those toasted cumin seeds in my spice grinder here. To that, I'm going to be adding, I've got some pickling salt here. You could also use kosher salt, that's totally fine. I've got 3% of that, and I am going to put it in the grinder just to kind of bust up these, these larger pieces of salt. I've got peppercorns, whole peppercorns, because you could just use ground pepper, but I like the, the whole peppercorns, and that's 2% of those. Obviously, I'm going to need to break those up as well. I've got some black garlic here that uh, actually my buddy Dave made for me, and it's one and a half percent of that. Because it dried out a little bit and there, it's kind of chunkier, I'm going to throw this in here too. I'm almost overdoing it capacity-wise, but that's okay. And now I'm just going to go ahead and grind it. There we go. I'm going to pop it into this bowl here with... This cure number two, or nitro cure number two, or prog powder number two, depending on where you live and what the manufacturer calls it, it's 0.25% of that. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of evenly distribute it here. And then we're ready to get it onto the pork loin. Okay, so as always, I've got my meat in this meat tub so that I can get all this spice on here without causing a big mess everywhere. Slosh it on. Get a nice distribution of the seasoning all the way around it. There we go. All right, perfect. So now that I've got this good base coating on here, I'm just going to prep up my bag and get the uh, the meat and all of that cure into it. All right, I've got my lovely assistant here. And now I'm just going to take this, slide it on in. Got this bag doubled over here so that we sort of limit and restrict any of that meat from getting on the outside. So that way I don't have to be worried when I touch it. And now I'm going to go ahead and pour all of this extra spice into the bag so that we're not missing anything. Here we are. So I've also gone ahead and just kind of spread the seasoning around, and this uh, cure I should say, around a little bit in that bag. Now we can vacuum seal it. You can also go ahead and do this with Ziploc bags, but this is just a little bit better way to ensure that you don't have any possible leakage in your fridge. So as soon as this seals here, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a second seal like I did on the, on the bottom end here. Again, just for maximum protection and ensuring, ensuring that nothing leaks. All right, well, I'm all labeled up here, so I'm going to toss this into the fridge, and I'm going to be coming in here probably every day and just giving it a little massage, flipping it around and whatnot. And I'll give it, uh, well, I guess we'll see, at least a month, probably closer to six weeks, just because I really want to have maximum penetration of all of this, all of those uh, spices and seasonings that are in that rub. So there are several items that I have for this next step. First of all, I've got a collagen sheet. You can see the size here that I'm going to be using. I've got some nice big netting that I'll be able to use for hanging the, the charcuterie. I've got some scissors. I've got a little bit of vinegar just to help sanitize things. And then some hog ring pliers and some half inch hog rings just to kind of seal everything up. All right, so this actually got about five weeks just because it took me till this week to get to it. So hopefully all of the flavors of those spices are really packed into that meat. Now I'm just going to give it a quick rinse off here to get any of this excess spicing off. And then we will be ready to wrap it. All right, so I've got my cutting board and everything all sprayed down here with just a little bit of vinegar. And I'm going to give this just a nice wrapping here. 
Might as well just use this all up. By putting it in this uh, collagen sheet here, it's going to protect the meat. It's going to help restrict uh, mold growth and really sort of let it lose weight at the rate that I want it to. So I'm going to use these hog rings just to seal it up on the one end here. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Oh, that's a three eighths. I like having two sizes of the hog rings in the house because the three eighths work quite a bit better when I'm doing salami and stuff that's a little bit smaller. There we go. Then, of course, with the little prickers here, help prevent air pockets that are going to stick around and allow for mold growth underneath. A little lot more of that will get squished out once we get our netting on it. So the netting I've got right here. Actually, just before I do that, I'm going to trim off a little bit of this excess since it's unnecessary. There we go. And with a second set of hands here, we're going to kind of roll it all up and slide this in. Nice thing about having some excess. Um, excess layers of casing here is then I'm less worried about if it was just a slight overlap that way it's not going to get pulled off or anything like that. All right so I'm going to go ahead and just get some hog rings on this here as well. And this is pretty much ready to hang. And one final step before taking this downstairs was simply getting an original weight here and then I've got my target weight which is 35% weight loss which is what I'm shooting for on this. I've just got that tied on with a string that again I kind of sprayed down with a little bit of vinegar and now it's time to get this in the curing chamber. So here we are in the chamber and I've got this set at 73% relative humidity and 53 degrees Fahrenheit and the waiting game begins. Okay, so let's get a weight on the smoked pepper loin here. So our target was 1.115 and we just overshot it a little bit here at 1.093 kilograms. So this has been in the chamber for seven weeks and it hit that weight loss, which is awesome. That's a super quick turnaround. And look at that there coming out. It's a little hard, not, not super hard on the outside, but definitely could benefit from some equalization. So we're going to go ahead and do that here inside this vacuum seal bag. So I'm going to seal it up and fire it in the fridge and let it sit there for a couple of months, probably, well, probably a month would be good enough, but if I can be patient, I'll give it two and then we can slice into it. So I said I was gonna wait a month, maybe two. I actually waited four. Partially because I was on vacation, I wasn't around to dig into this, but either way, uh, I've been a very patient boy, and it's time to cut into this. So let's check out this, uh, this pork loin. So just slice into that there. And taking a look at this, I can see that I still have the casing on here. Thank goodness, because that looked a little anemic. We'll pull this off. That, that looks far better right there. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's cut into this. Absolutely gorgeous. Leaving it for that extra time, it's perfectly even here. There's no quote unquote case hardening or anything like that. Beautifully equalized, but let's slice it and see how it tastes. So I will be slicing this using my Avanco slicer here. Let's try this on one and see what it looks like. 
Oh, that's a little thicker than I want it. Let's go to 0.5. Here we are right there. I'm gonna slice off a few more here and then we can try it. It's all about patience, right? It is time. I love it when you can actually see through a beautiful piece of dry-aged charcuterie like this. Mm, I can't wait any longer. When it's that thin, it almost just melts in your mouth. This one though. Okay, so right in the door, it's those the toasted human seed. Mm, there's some of the uh, some of that black garlic, that rich, earthy black garlic character, and then a little bit of the peppercorn. I sort of expected the peppercorns to come through a little bit more, but they're not. But I'm I'm not upset by it. The cumin and the the black garlic are certainly carrying carrying this meat. I need another little piece off the slicer here. Mm. It's beautiful. It's flavorful, and yet it's really delicate at the same time. So, taking a relatively inexpensive piece of meat, this pork loin, just treating it with some love, giving it some time, patience being key, you wind up with an absolutely fabulous piece of meat. So hope you try it or some variation of it and until next time, keep it at 11.